and welcome to Hello Artist, an interview series where we get to know one visual artist but keep it brief enough to leave you wanting more. Kind of like when your favorite true crime podcast posts the first half of a murder case and then the second half on their Patreon. I'm your host, Marissa Tani Thaler, and today we're talking to an illustrator who is also a fellow murderino. Please say hello to Sarah Pulver. Hello, artist. Hello, Marissa. Thank you so much for having me. This is so wonderful. So here's how today's interview is going to work. I'm going to ask you four questions, and then we'll do a speed round, all right? First of all, go ahead and tell me um, who you are as a visual artist and what kind of work you do. Say so I'm an illustrator and a letter. And in addition to my personal artwork, I also own and operate my business, Dear Ollie, which is a line of stationery and illustrated goods. So these days I'm working mostly with digital illustration, but I also love getting back to the basics, a little bit of everything. Tell me what you're working on right now. Besides just surviving. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I currently have a few commercial and client projects that I'm working on right now. Because in addition to that, I've kind of been trying recently to take a step back and remember how to play. So like as artists, we all need that time to just experiment and just kind of let it flow a little bit easier. Can you tell us what usually uh, inspires your work? Uh, flora and fauna are huge inspirations in my work, and I tend to be really drawn to the more conventionally undesirable. <laughs> <laughs> so like plants that are a little on the weird side, or like more animals that people usually find to be like a little ugly, or maybe more considered as pests. So people, bodies, weird stuff in general. So what would you say is the biggest or most important part of your art career so far? Say I was supposed to have my first solo gallery exhibition this year in April through June. And obviously due to the pandemic, that didn't happen. But I still feel like that body of work that I created has really propelled me forward and that I've grown a lot through that process. Like what about it was, was so renewing? The fact that it was making art for myself Say, as a small business owner who sells illustrated goods, saleability is always such a high factor in my head. So pushing that aside and getting back to what I really wanted to make and what I really wanted to draw was just really refreshing and much needed. Through that journey of going back to that place, I feel like I've become a better artist. Yeah, I think that's that's maybe something that we as artists don't really talk about. So maybe at the beginning of your career where you're making art for yourself, and then it kind of can sometimes get lost. That's exactly what it was. As my business became more successful, say I kind of lost that part of it. So being able to kind of get back to those roots was... I mean, I've seen the collection and I feel like you can really see it in your pieces. It's like a really deeply personal and deeply Sarah uh, body of work. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, it's good. It's good stuff. Okay, so we have come to the speed round portion of our interview. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Question one, what is your favorite color? Weird greens. Like, you can keep your grass green. Give me like a weird turquoise or like an ochre. Question two, who is your favorite artist? The first person who immediately comes to my head is Frida Kahlo. But in more modern terms, my favorite artist is Chris Roberts Antio. She's a mixed media artist, but primarily focuses on what she calls fabric painting. Or it's like the most insanely beautiful illustrative applique quilt that you've ever seen in your entire life. So question three, what is your favorite part of your creative routine? Finishing a piece. <laughs> I get really caught up in my head a lot and I have like terrible imposter syndrome. So when I finish a piece, like that all goes quiet. Question four is a question that's just for me. If you could choose one unsolved murder to know actually what happened, what case would you choose? Jean Benet Ramsey. Oh my gosh, that's mine too. <laughs> <laughs> What's your guess right now? I don't necessarily think that the family did it purposefully. Mm -hmm. They're definitely involved. Well, and now that Patsy is gone, she can never come forward and say, yeah, I wrote that ransom note. <laughs> right, which she obviously did. Clearly like, she did. <laughs> yeah, like the phrases she used and everything. And wasn't there like a couple of rough drafts? You really think a kidnapper is going to do He's that? Gonna take one. <laughs> like, that's very much 
like a me move. <laughs> I literally have to like write out what I'm gonna put on a greeting card beforehand. So. Like I don't trust myself to be extemporaneous. Are you kidding me? Look at me. Not at all. <laughs> So as we wrap up, is there anything that you wanted to plug right now, or if you wanted to tell us where we could find you on social media? If you're interested in like our stickers and stuff, you can check me out at zeroolly.com. Um, or you can view my exhibition that was going to be at East Arbor Architecture. Say so you can do that on sarahpolver.com. As social media, I'm most active on Instagram. Give me a follow. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for having me. I've loved watching all the interviews as they come in. And thank you for joining us today. Make sure to check out Sarah's information in the description of the video below. And be sure to join us next time where we get to say hello to one more artist. Thank you.